Hi, I'm Andy, and I'm going to help you code your first ever game. You don't have to have done any coding before for this to work, hopefully. I'm going to do my best on that anyway, and leave comments if you need help. Um, do have a look at the blog post, which is linked from the show notes, uh, that you can see on the screen at the moment. Uh, it's got all the code in it, so if you need to check what you typed, make sure um, uh, you didn't have any typos, or you, if you get any weird errors. Um, have a look at the blog post, it's got all the code there. Uh, it takes you through step by step. Everything that I'm going to do in this video is on there. So this is what the game is going to look like. It's a little snake game. It's it's going to be quite a small amount of code. I'm going to type every single line of code with you. You can follow along with me. Pause the video if you need me to slow down. Um, we're going to write this game together. Um, we'll see how long it takes. Okay, so have a look at the blog post. Um, and let's get started. So let's get started by just closing all of this and starting from the Raspberry Pi. So you don't need to have a Raspberry Pi, you can try this on um, a Windows PC or a Linux PC or a Mac. Uh, all you need is a text editor and a web browser and you need to get the, the code that I'm about to show you. Now I'm using Git to get the code. You can get Git on all that those types of computers and there's a link in the blog post about how to get it. Um, you can actually also download um, the, the code that I'm, I'm talking about getting without using Git, if, if using Git is a problem. We're only using Git to get the code. Anyway, enough ado. Let's, uh, let's see what we're doing. So we're on a Raspberry Pi, like I said, it doesn't have to be a Raspberry Pi. But what you will need to do is open a web browser, which I'm pretty sure you've got. And then we're going to type in, just to find this code that we need to get us started, we're going to type in small pixel, S-M-O-L, P-X-L, dot artificial worlds. Worlds.net. Small pixel dot artificial worlds dot net. Again, there's a link in the blog post which is linked from the show notes of the video. Um, when you go to small pixel dot artificial worlds dot net, you'll see it's uh, a game website with some little games that I've written. Uh, and what we're going to do is use the code that I use to help me write these games, and it's going to help us write our game today. So scroll right down to the bottom, look at all these lovely games you can play. Do go there and play the games. Um, and find the link right at the bottom that says gitlab.com slash antibrainum slash smallpixel. That's where you get the code. So let's go there, move myself out of the way. So here's the uh, site on this site called GitLab, which has all the code. And in this site, there's a button called, that says clone. So we click on clone and it opens up this thing. And there's two options. One of them is clone with HTTPS. And that's the one we need. And we copy this little button next to it. Let me scroll down a bit which says copy URL. So you click on that, and now you've copied that special uh, URL, that special address that lets you uh, download the code with Git. So we're going to use Git to do it. So the way to use Git to download the code is to go to the terminal here, click on that, click on that, and it'll, it'll open up our black terminal window. And we're going to type in here a command. We're going to type in git clone and then we're going to do we're going to right click and say paste because we did we did that copy URL to get that um, clone URL and now we're going to paste it in. When we paste it in, it finishes off our command for us. So now it says git clone, then a space, and then all of this stuff, which means that's where to get the code. So we run that command and it downloads all the code we need to help us. So that made a directory called small pixel, a folder called small pixel on our Raspberry Pi. So we can close this window. And we can go to our file manager, which is this one, open it up. Here are all our normal folders that we have, and there's a new folder that's appeared called small pixel. So let's go inside small pixel, and then let's go inside public. Now there's a few games in here in this public section, which are the games that you just saw on that website. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy one of them and then just delete all the code from it. So we've got something to start from. So the one we're going to copy is Snake, although actually it doesn't matter. So right click on Snake and say copy. And then right click somewhere here and say paste. And it says, oh, I don't want to um, create a new folder with the same name as the old one. So we're not going to call it Snake, we're going to call it Mini Snake. So if I type in Mini Snake in the file name section, and then I click on rename, that means paste this new thing with a different name. And now I've got another folder created called Mini Snake. So all we've done is copy the Snake folder and make another folder called Mini Snake. So let's double click on Mini Snake and go inside. Now these games always have an index.html, which, which is only a tiny little bit of stuff in there. 
You can ignore that for now or have a look at it if you like. All that really does is it says load up game.js and game.js is the uh, the code of our game. It's a .js file because our game is going to be written in JavaScript. So let's have a look at the code for this game by double clicking on game.js. And that opened up in mousepad. Now just make sure that the window takes up the whole screen because you're going to want all your code visible in here. So now game.js is open in mousepad. If you're not on a Raspberry Pi or something's not set up the same way, what you might need to do is right click on game.js and say edit or text editor or something like that. All you need to do is open it in a program like mousepad or notepad or text editor or uh, gedit or kate or something else that lets you edit all the um, text, that's, all the JavaScript that's inside this game.js file. So now what I'm going to do is delete everything, right? Because we're going to write our game from scratch. We're not going to use this. So you could click on edit and then select all. And that selects everything. And then just press the delete key on the keyboard. And it's gone. So now there's nothing in there. And we are set up and ready to start writing our game. Now, one of the hardest bits of this whole video is this next bit, where you've got to type quite a few lines of code. And I'm not really going to explain what they mean very much. So trust me, and I'm going to explain most of the bits. This is just the, the first bit that we need, which is um, less interesting for me to explain. So I'm going to type out um, some stuff, follow along with me, look at the blog posts, and you can see all the code written there in case you, uh, in case I go too fast or pause me or whatever. So what we're going to type in is const game equals new small pixel game dot game. Now make sure you get the capitals right make sure you include semicolon stuff like that at the end um, everything matters so whether there's a space matters whether it's capital matters so you have to get it exactly right and later on we'll see where uh, in the console you might get errors if you get any errors it's probably because you missed out a capital missed out a semicolon um, or, or just did a typo make sure you get all the spelling exactly right so uh, that's what coding is like it's fun it's frustrating as anything uh, it's all those things Okay, so we're going to do game.setSize20, 20, 20. Now, what this means is we're making a new game. So here you can say new smallpixel.game. So that means use the code from smallpixel and make a game from it. Um, put it into a thing called game, which is called a variable, basically a name where, where we, hold, we store stuff. So make a new game, put it in a thing called game with a small g. And then we're going to do some stuff with game. And the things we're doing with game is we're setting the size of this game to 20, 20, which means it's going to be 20 squares wide and 20 squares tall. So small, what small pixel does is it gives you a grid of squares that you can work with. That could be quite big. It could be a thousand by a thousand or something like that. And you could do a really um, beautiful detailed game. We're going to do a really, really simple game like you saw, uh, which is just a grid of squares 20 by 20. Uh, we're, so we've said what size the game's going to be. Let's also say what the title of the game is. So game.set title, well, let's call it mini snake. Put, remember that semicolon at the end, remember all those brackets. So these these things, when we, when we do something and then put a bracket like this, this is calling a function. So the, there's, a, there's a function called set title, we're calling it and we're passing in some arguments. In this case, one argument, which is this mini snake uh, we put quotes around it because it's um, some some text, some a string, and then the set size function we're passing in two arguments: twenty and then a comma, and then twenty for the width and the height of the screen. Anyway, so that's those calling functions. We're already calling functions. Now you you can't just you don't just it's not just possible to call functions. It's also possible to create your own functions. So those were functions that someone else wrote. Now we're going to make our own functions, but they're not actually going to do anything yet. So. We're going to write a function called update, and I'll explain what all this means in a minute. And when you call update, at the moment we're writing update, we're designing update, but when we call it, we're going to pass in two arguments. So those arguments are going to be called running game and model. So we're defining a function, that's what the word function means. The function's called update, and it takes two arguments, running game and model. And we're going to put absolutely nothing inside it. This curly bracket means this is the start of the function. This curly bracket means this is the end of the function. So nothing is going to happen when you call function, when you call update. We're going to make another function called view. That's also going to take two arguments. One of them is called screen and one of them is called model again. I'll explain what a model is and what a screen is in a minute. Finally, once we've defined those functions, which don't do anything yet, but we need them, we're going to call start, which basically says 
start the game. So the, the, the start function on the game takes in several arguments. It takes in what's the code name of this game, which is Mini Snake. And then it takes in a model, which I'll explain in a bit. And then it takes in the view and update functions that we created above. So basically we're saying, please could you start this game? Oh, and by the way, how this game works is it has this model. It displays the screen using this view function and it updates the model using the update function. Now I will explain what I mean by all those words, um, but that's what we're doing here. That's your first introduction to what's really going on. So we start the game and we say, oh, the code name of the game is this. Uh, the model starts off like this, as in nothing at all. And this is how to update the model. This is how to display the model on the screen. So we've written some code that's probably complete gobbledygook to you, um, but uh, hopefully as we gradually fill it in, it'll make more sense. So we've written our code. Now what we have to remember, what you may well forget while you're going through this, is you have to remember to do to save it every time before we do the next bit. So go File, Save, and you can see that it's saved because this little star disappeared from the title bar. Um, now we've saved our file, our game.js file, back to here. So now that, that code we typed is stored inside game.js. And in order to actually see our game, which obviously doesn't do very much yet, we're going to double click on index.html and that's going to open in our web browser, which on the Raspberry Pi is called Chromium. So you can see the title that we typed in, Mini Snake, has now appeared in the tab in Chromium. And you can see our game. Now it doesn't look very interesting yet, it's just a black screen, but already it's got a title that tells you to press enter to start or press escape to pause it. Um, so it's small pixel. Um, does all that stuff for you. We told it the title and it's now displaying it on the screen for us. So we've already written a game, not a very interesting game. Uh, now if this doesn't work for you, um, uh, then that's fine and normal. You should go back, check your code, check it against the blog post that's linked from the show notes. Make sure you've got exactly, exactly what I typed here. So have a double check now. If it doesn't display, if it just looks grey or something like that, that's normal, that just means you typed something wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the console so that we can see what, what went wrong, because at the moment it's not really telling us what went wrong if it did go wrong. In my case it didn't. Um, I could show you what happens if it does. So what we're going to do is open up the console. The way we do that is we click on these three dots in the top right, and then we scroll, we go down to More Tools, and then we click on Developer Tools. And that's going to open up all the extra tools that help you create web pages instead of just looking at web pages. So I clicked on developer tools. And then the other thing you have to do, you'll probably open up here in, in this elements tab. The elements tab isn't what we want at this, mo this point. We want console. So if you click on console, um, you can see there are no errors written here. If there were, if something had gone wrong, it would have written some stuff in red. So let me actually just put a mistake into my code so I can show you what happens. So we go back into our code, and if I spell game wrong, like this, so I've spelled something wrong. If I do file, save, and then I switch back to Chromium, nothing has changed. This is going to trick trip you up if you're not careful. So just because I saved, it doesn't mean that we've actually loaded the page up in here. This is still showing the old stuff. So click on refresh, or reload, sorry. And look, this might be what you saw first time if you typed something wrong. But hopefully if you display the console, you can see it gives us a little error message. Now sometimes these error messages are totally incomprehensible. Sometimes they might help you. So here, some of this stuff is probably incomprehensible. Uncaught type error, what does that mean? Uh, Smallpixel.gme is not a constructor. Um, might be confusing, but sometimes they give you clues. So for example, it does mention the thing we got wrong. Smallpixel.gme is not a constructor. It's, it's not something that we uh, know about. And also, look, it tells us what line of code went wrong. Game.js colon one. That means line one of game.js. So let's go and look at game.js. Look at line number one. And by the way, if you want to, you can say view line numbers and it'll tell you what lines you're on. Um, and we can see, look, oh, line number one, which is the top line, mentions this small pixel.gme, but small pixel.gme is not right. So th those error messages in the console, they do give you clues as to what's wrong. Sometimes they tell you the wrong line. Sometimes they tell you a few lines later because one of the mistakes you made confuses it. Um, but they can give you clues. Certainly, if there's red written in here, 
something is wrong you better check back make sure you typed everything the right way okay so let's save so file save go back to chrome chromium don't forget it's still showing us the old version so we have to click reload or refresh and then it loads up now it's working we can tell it's working because there's no errors in the console and everything looks how we expected it okay so we've got a little bit of code that does absolutely nothing we've got a game and actually if you press enter the game actually does start um, it just it doesn't really do anything so okay so we've written a game doesn't do anything um, and our game is going to be made out like I've already mentioned it's going to be really made out of three things it's going to be made out of a model a view and an update uh, view and update are functions and the model is just some information so we're going to start off by just looking at the model and the view and if you're following on on the blog post this is going to be the section that's just called the model and the view so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with one of the simplest bits of a snake game which is a, the, an apple which is actually just a square uh, drawn on the screen somewhere that, that the snake can eat so in order to have an apple in our game we need two things we need a, a bit of the model that says this is where the apple is and we need a bit of the view that says this is how to draw the apple on the screen so let's go back to our code in game.js and let's change this bit near the bottom so that we can say where the apple is so now I need to explain a little bit more about the model view and update so this thing I said before didn't I was the model but it's a curly bracket and another curly bracket which just means in this in this case just means nothing so we don't want a model that has nothing in it we want a model that tells us where the apple is so actually what I'm going to do is make a little function that makes a new model so I'm going to make a function I'm going to call it new model Oops, spell and this function doesn't take in any arguments so you don't pass any information to new model when you call it you just call it directly and I'll show you how to call it in a second and this function what it does is it returns an object and you can tell an object in JavaScript because it's it starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket now there's two things in JavaScript that start with a curly bracket and end with a curly bracket one of them is a function like we've already seen and the other one is an object so in this case because we're already inside a function we're making an object so this the way an object works is you have a curly bracket to start it and then a curly bracket to finish it and then inside you have a name or lots of names and each name has a colon after it and then the stuff that, that lives with that name so what we're saying is we're making a model and inside it it has an apple and uh, or has a name called apple and they, when, if you ask for that name you're going to get back at 5 comma 5 so this is going to be coordinates basically the apple is going to be at 5 along and 5 down from the top of the screen so this is how we're making a new model so this is this is our definition of a function to say this is some code you can use to make an, a new model if I want to actually make a new model I have to call the function so calling a function looks like this so basically when we start the game when instead of saying I'll start off with nothing we're now saying start off by calling new model that's what the bracket bracket means it means go off to and actually run this code and give me back this thing uh, which is an object which has one thing in it called apple and that apple is going to be the value of that is going to be 5 comma 5 um, so we've we've made a new model we've we've told our game when it starts your model is going to have this apple in it but we haven't told it how to display it on the screen yet so nothing very interesting is going to happen so let's have a look at how to draw things on the screen so what we're going to do in order to draw things on the screen is we're going to write some code inside the view function because the view fun the whole point of the view, view function is to draw stuff on the screen and the view function gets given two things to work with it gets given your screen to draw on and it gets given your model which is the current state of the game or what you know what information do we have about what's going on in the game now we made a model we just made a model so we know that there's something inside model which is apple so we can refer to things uh, we can refer to the apple inside the model by saying model.apple so what we're actually going to do is we're going to do screen.set which means um, draw one of the rectangles on the screen so the screen is the way we draw stuff set just means draw set like set a, 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 the color of a square on our screen 
And what we're going to say is we have to say where which, which square we're going to set and what color. So the way we get we say which square to set is we say the first number inside apple, which is this five. The way we say that is we say square brackets and then zero, which means the first one. And then we say model.apple brackets one, which is the second number inside apple. Because yes, it's confusing because the numbers start at zero. So the second number inside apple is that five. So we're saying draw draw something at five comma five. Um, so five five in from the left, five down from the top. And then we've got to say what color we're going to draw it. And for that, we're going to use an RGB color, red, green, blue. So we're going to say square bracket and then the amount of red, the amount of green, and the amount of blue. So the numbers I happen to know go from 0 to 255. So we're saying as much red as possible, no green, no blue. So what we're saying is draw this square, make it red. So draw it at 5,5, or actually these numbers might change in future, but for now, uh, because we know the model says 5,5, we're going to draw it at the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the apple, and we're going to draw it in red. So now we've said where the apple is, or what kind of what the apple is, and we've said how to draw the apple on the screen. So let's try this out before we do anything else. File, save. Go back to Chromium, hit the re reload button, don't forget, and then click or hit enter to start the game. And look, at five in from the left, five down from the top, we've drawn a red square. We are already making a game. This is how a game works. It has a, um, a model or some stuff, some data about what's going on, and then a way of drawing that on the screen, and a way of updating it, which we'll get to. So uh, if something went wrong and you've got errors in your console, don't worry, it's normal. It happens to me every day. Uh, programming is like the most amazing fun and the most agonizing pain in the world. That's why it's so great. Um, so don't worry about it. Totally normal. But go to the blog post that's linked from this, in the show notes of this video. Scroll down and you'll find a link at the bottom of this section to exactly what your code should look like. And if you go back to game.js, you can see my code looks exactly like this. Um, if you go to that blog post, you can compare your version against that, or just compare it against what you can see on the screen here. Anything slightly wrong, like you missed out this curly bracket, or something else, anything like that, it won't work. You'll get some red. Hopefully, you get some red on the console. What re what's really bad is if it goes wrong and you don't get any red on the console and you have no idea what's going on. That can happen too. So if something doesn't work the way it should, uh, just double, triple check your code, compare it against the code linked from the blog post. So we've got a game, but it's not a very interesting game. Let's make it more interesting by drawing a snake on the screen. So we're going to do exactly the same thing we did with the apple. We're going to say, where is the snake or what is the snake? And then we're going to, in a separate section in the view code, we're going to say, how do I draw this on the screen? So in order to say uh, what the snake looks like, we're going to add a body property into this object. So this is how you have more than one thing inside an object. Remember these curly bracket meant an object. An apple was one of the one of the names inside it, one of the properties. And now we're making a new one called body. Do not forget, I added a comma at the end. All these things need to be separated by commas. You don't put a comma on the last one, but all the properties before the last one need to have that comma at the end, otherwise it all goes terribly wrong. Now, the apple was just an x and a y coordinate, five comma five. The body is going to be a list of x and y coordinates. So we're actually going to do some square brackets to say this is a list of things. And then inside that, we're going to have another square bracket, another set of pairs of square brackets. So this is the coordinate 10, 10, and then 10, 11. So these are positions on the screen. Oops. That's right. Um, 10, 12, 10, 13. Whoops. 12, 13, 10, 13, ah, oh, can't type. Uh, and 10, 14. So this is a list. You've got square brackets all the way around the outside to say it's a list. And then inside you've got these little lists of two things. 10, 10, 10, 11, 10, 12, blah, blah, blah. So these are the coordinates of the body sections of the snake. So this is the, this is the body of the snake. So this is the head of the snake, the first one, 10, 10. And the rest of it is what we call the tail of the snake, and we'll get to that a bit later. 
But basically, these are coordinates on the screen of where where is the snake at the moment. Um, yeah, as I said, don't forget the comma. So that was that was where the snake is. Now let's draw the snake on the screen. So to do that, we're going to go back into our view function, and we're going to type some more stuff. One, two, three, four. Oops. Sorry. Okay. So I'm going to say I'm going to write a comment. It says snake. So any line that starts with slash slash, that's a comment. So I could type anything I like here, and it won't make any difference to anything. So I'm going to say snake because I'm drawing the snake, and I'm going to do a loop. I'll explain some of this in a minute. Maybe not all of it. And while I'm just before I finish that, I'll add another comment here saying apple. So this is just to remind us. These comments are just to remind us what bit of code does what. So we know this bit of code draws the apple. We can tell because the color here is red. And this bit of code here helps us draw the snake. So we're making a for loop. So what for means is go through a list of things and for everything in the list, do something. So what we're saying is go through everything inside body. You know body's a list, so you can go through it. So we're going to say go through this thing in, in the list, then this thing, then this thing, and so on. And each time round, give me an X and a Y which are this 10 and this 10. And then next time around the loop, this the x will be 10, but the y will be 11, and so on. So we're going to say repeat all of this code, but every time give me a different x and y based on what was in our list in body. So x and y are going to be, first time around, they're going to be 10, 10. Next time around, they're going to be 10, 11, and so on. So we're using set again, just like we did with the apple, to draw a rectangle on the screen. But this time, instead of drawing it at the position of the apple, we're going to say draw it at one of these positions of the parts of the body. So set at, set the rectangle at x comma y, and then what color do we want the snake to be? Well, again, it's a red, green, blue. So no red this time. Lots of green, no blue. So the snake's going to come out green. Um, so now I think we've done enough to draw the snake on the screen. So let's try it. File, save, go back to Chromium. Click reload, and look, you can already see it works. But if I if I click or hit enter, I can start my game. So look, here's 10 comma 10, 10 comma 11, 10 comma 12. These are the coordinates. Those that's what those coordinates meant. So it's 10 across from the left, and then 10 down, 11 down, 12 down from the top. So we can see we've said where our snake's body is, and then we've drawn our snake's body on the screen. So it sort of looks like a game, right? But not maybe quite much fun yet. So let's let's um, get to the kind of last bit of a game, which is making things change over time. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to add some stuff to the update function. So what we're going to do is move the snake every time we, uh, we get called. So the way uh, that small pixel works, the way that oh, lots of games work, is that uh, every time step we run the same code again and again and again. So this time, every time step, we run update to say how should I change my model because things in the world are changing. Once we've run update, we run view to, to redraw the screen to show what's changed. So we're going to write some code inside update to make the snake move every time update gets called. So let's do that. Move the snake. Notice, by the way, I'm adding four spaces at the beginning here, and then I added another four spaces here. That's actually just to make it's easier to understand the code. You don't have to have those spaces, but I really strongly recommend you do type them. So what we're going to do is, you remember I said, oops, remember I said that this first thing in the list is the head of the snake, and the rest of it's the, the tail. Well, I'm going to make a new head. I'm going to move move the head by one, and then I'm going to make a new tail, which is the like adjusted um, version of what the snake's going to be. We're going to treat the head and the tail separately, and you'll kind of see why, hopefully. A minute. So we're going to say, whoops, excuse me. We're going to say make make a new head be something. So we're making a, a variable or just a name uh, called new head, which is going to be the new head. Uh, and we say let just to say this is a variable. We're going to say small pixel dot moved. So this is this is a function that small pixel gives us this coord moved, which basically says move an x and y coordinate in a direction, um, and we're going to move it 
well, the thing we're going to move, whoops, model dot body. The thing we're going to move is the head of the snake. So the head of the snake is the first thing in the list. So when the way to say the first thing in the list is square bracket zero. So that gives us this 10 comma 10. So we're saying move 10 comma 10. And what direction are we going to move it in? Well, we're going to move it in a direct in the direction that's stored in the model. Now I'm actually doing a kind of fantasy coding here. I'm making up, pretending that we've made a, di a DIR property inside our model. But if you look at our model, we've only got an apple and a body in there. But in a sec, I'm going to add DIR. So this is actually sometimes quite a good way of writing code. You pretend you've got something and then you fill it in later. Honestly, believe me. So we're going to we'll do that in a second. But first, we're going to um, figure out where the rest of the snake goes. So basically what we want to do is the, the the new head should be this one but moved in one in one direction or another so maybe it'll be 9 comma 10 because we moved upwards and then the new tail is going to be the whole of this stuff except the last thing because we're moving by moving forward by one so all we need to do to get the new tail is just say give me all this stuff but miss out the last one and actually there's a way of doing that so model the body which is all of this stuff and then there's a function that you can call on that body called slice. And if we do slice starting at zero and ending at minus one, which means one in from the right. So start at zero, which is the first one, and end one in, so end here. It basically means give me all of this stuff, miss out the last one. So that's exactly what we need. The new tail should be everything except the last one. The new head should be this one, but moved along by one. So now we've got a head and a tail. We're done. We've we've, de we've decided how our, the body of our snake is going to look. So now we can actually change the body of our snake like this. Now, actually, this is sort of like some cool JavaScript stuff. We can make a new list out of the head, the head and the tail that we've got by saying make a list starts off with head. Oh, and then stick on the rest of tail. The, 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 stick on new tail to make the rest of our list. So we've made, we've changed what body is, and what we have to do, and if you forget, it's going to make you really sad, is at the end of every, um, at the end of, of update, whenever we've changed something, we always return model. So whenever you've done anything inside update, you should return model. If you don't return model, uh, small pixel thinks you haven't changed anything, which could happen, right? If you're um, nothing's changing in your game at that moment, so it's sort of an optimization for that case that small pixel will do nothing if you don't return anything. So make sure you don't forget to return model. So we've updated the model with our new body, and now we're returning our model. So return just means uh, wh whoever called this update function gets back this thing when, um, when they ask for it. So what we've done is we've said move the tail, move the head, move the tail, Make a new body out of that head and tail, and then send it back. So we've almost done enough now to make the snake move. But remember, we did some fantasy coding. We pretended that there was a direction value being stored in model. So we better make sure we do that. We better keep our promises. So what we do is we put a comma at the end of this line. Do not forget the comma, because we're going to add another property inside our model called DIR. And actually, Small pixel gives us some directions we can use. So we're just going to use up. So basically we're saying at the beginning the snake is facing up. And the way we say up is small pixel dot directions dot up. So now at the beginning, because remember this new model gets called at the beginning to say make me a model. We're, at the beginning we have an apple at 5,5. 5. We have the body of the snake at these coordinates. And we have a direction saying the snake is facing up. Then we've written an update function which says move the snake in whatever direction it's facing. And then return the answer. So we're ready to try out our game. So let's do file save. Go back to Chromium. Don't forget to press reload. And then we're going to start our game. Let's try pressing enter. And look, the snake moves upwards. We're, I mean, it, it keeps going upwards forever. And we can't control it. So, you know, it's not a game yet. 
but it's pretty exciting. And if you want to watch it again, just click on that reload button again. And it goes again. We've almost written a game. Okay, so we better allow ourselves to actually control where the snake goes, right? Otherwise, this is going to be a fairly dull game. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of a few more things. Um, and well, we're going to keep track of one more thing in the model. So let's write that first. So I'm going to put this at the beginning of our model. So put a load of spaces so we're lined up. And I'm going to say alive colon true because I want to keep track of whether or not the snake is alive. Uh, when you start off, it's going to be true, which means yes, the snake is alive. And later it's going to be false because the snake's not alive. So let's go back to our update function. Now that we've got that extra little bit of information we needed. And let's start off by just saying like, quite a simple thing, which is if you're not alive, don't move the snake. Okay, so the way we do that is we say if, and if always has a bracket after it. And then we say if exclamation mark model dot alive. So what the exclamation mark means is not, like the opposite of. So if we are not alive, do whatever I say between the curly brackets. And all I'm going to say is return. Remember I said return gives back the answer? Well, in this case, we're giving back an answer of absolutely nothing. Just immediately stop running this all of this code inside update and just go away. So if we're not alive, don't update anything. Okay, nothing changed. Small pixel won't draw anything else on the screen. So that's just a, a quick check to say if you're alive, basically stop moving. If you're not alive, sorry, stop moving. If you are alive, we just carry on. So now here's the interesting code, which is find out whether the, the player pressed the key. And the way we do that in small pixel is we use this running game thing that we've been given. And we say if running game got received input. Now make sure you type received right. I'm very sorry for using that word. It seems like the right word to use, but it's hard to spell. R-E-C-E-I-V-E-D. So if we received input of left. So what we're saying is if the player pressed the left arrow key, basically. So if the player pressed the left arrow key, then we, what we do gets put in the curly brackets. And what we're going to do is change the direction. So remember that model.dir that we did here? Now, instead of just asking about it, which is what we did here, now we're going to change it. So the way we change it is we say model.dir equals small pixel dot directions dot, guess what? Left. So if the player press the left arrow key, set our direction to be the left direction. Okay, fine. What if they press something else? Well, we say else if, else if means um, don't come in here. If you've already done this bit, don't do this bit. If they, if, if they haven't, if they're not pressing left, then maybe we do this bit instead. Else if running game dot received input again, you're gonna get practice spelling it. So if they press the right arrow key, by the way, notice you've got two closing brackets here. So you're closing this bracket to just say the received input thing, but also the if had a bracket here, didn't it? So this is the closed bracket that goes with that one. So you have when you write if, you always write a round bracket around everything that you're saying, What what is the thing I'm asking about? So in this case, did I receive input? And then once... Uh, and then it's closed bracket, and then the curly bracket says what to do if you did receive input. So I'm just going to copy that bit of code because it's going to be almost the same. And I paste. I did a control V there to paste it in. So I'm saying if model de, uh, set model de to right. So if the, they press the right arrow, set the direction to right. And actually, I'm going to copy this stuff. So I'm going to do something very similar again. I'm going to say if they pressed up. Set the direction to up. I'm going to paste it one more time. I'm going to say, guess what? If they press down, set the direction to down. Whoops, might be right. So the fact that we've repeated a load of stuff here means maybe we could structure this code better. But for now, I hope that this is relatively simple for us to understand. So we're going to have it like this. So we've changed the direction based on whether they pressed a key. 
and then we already return model at the end. So we've changed models. We change change model to make the direction different, and we're returning model at the end. So always double check that you're like really returning it. Then we've got the code that moves the snake, and then we've got one more thing we're going to do, which is check whether you died. And we're only going to check whether you hit the edge at the moment, not whether you hit your own body, which is another thing that happens in snake. But we're going to say if you hit the edge, then we die. So let's write a comment. Hit. Die if we hit the edge. And then we're going to do a big if. Much bigger than we've done before. So I'm actually going to finish it on the next line. We're going to do some stuff inside. In fact, let's do the stuff inside now. So we're going to say if a load of stuff that we're about to do, then set model.alive to false. So basically, this means die, right? We're setting alive to false. It used to be true. Down here it's true. We're going to set it to false if you hit the edge. So how do we ask whether we're going to hit the edge? Well, basically, what matters is where the head is going to be next time step. So we've already got um, a coordinate for where the head is going to be next time step. This variable new head has the coordinates x and y of where our head's going to be next time step. So let's check where it is. We're going to say if the x coordinate, which is the first thing in that pair, because remember, it's the uh, new head is going to be an x and a y, similar to this. Say it's going to be a little list of two things. So to get the x coordinate, we just say give me the first one. So that's square bracket zero. So if new head uh, bracket zero, which is the x coordinate, is equal to the minimum value of x on the screen. So we're basically saying if you hit the left hand side of the screen, or that, that way, anywhere. Um, so if you hit the left hand side of the screen, then you die. So we're saying if the x coordinate of the new head is the minimum value that you're allowed for x on the screen, then you're dead. And then we've written this pipe pipe symbol. So the pipe symbol is probably in the bottom left of your keyboard. And that means or. If you put pipe pipe like that, it means or. So we say if our x coordinate is too small, you're dead. Or if our x coordinate is what? Too big. We hit our head. So running game dot screen dot max x. So if we've hit that side of the screen, I got my pointing right, um, then we're dead as well. If we've hit the maximum value you're allowed for x. But what about if you hit the top or the bottom screen? Well, if the y coordinate is the maximum, whoops, the maximum y coordinate or the minimum. Then we're also dead. Lastly, if the y coordinate. Notice, by the way, there's three equals is here. Quite often in JavaScript, when you're asking about something, whether it's the same as something else, you use three equals. And there's no pipe pipe at the end of this line because there's nothing else to say or. So this is if it's hit, if it's the left or the right or the top or the bottom then you're dead. But there's no more ors after that, right? Because we've done all the ors we need. Um, and that's all the changes we've done. So we, let's just recap what changes we've done. Um, we've added um, something to the model to say whether or not the snake's alive. And then we said if the snake's not alive, don't do any update, just return immediately. Then we've added some stuff to say if you're if, if they press left, turn left, and if they press right, turn right, and so on. And then finally, we've checked, are you alive? Or have you died by saying, if you hit the edge of the screen, then alive should be false, so you're dead. Right, so we've done some stuff. We should have a game that we can play, and I can press the arrow keys and move my stake. Let's try it out. It looks okay. I'm pressing arrow keys, and the snake is moving. So this is pretty exciting. Do you not agree? We've kind of made a game now. You can play with the snake. Now, if I eat the apple, nothing happens. Um, also, if I press right... Oh, I died. Uh, so, I, uh, well, yeah, let's try that again. So, when I hit the edge of the screen, I stop. And that, all we said when you when you die, we didn't change how it gets displayed at all. We just said, uh, when you die, stop updating. So, stop moving. So, that's fine. 
Now there are some problems in this game. For example, if I'm moving to the left and I press right, I just go through myself. So we've got more work to do before this game is finished, as well as obviously um, eating the apple. Um, so let's get on with that. So let's start off by making it possible to eat apples. Now, in order for us to um, eat apples, we're going to need to be able to place apples, not always just at 5, 5, but at some other point on the screen, right? Otherwise, it's going to be pretty dull. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a function that gives us a random position for an apple instead of always saying 5, 5. So I'm going to do that by writing a new function called randApple. And instead of it just... If we wanted the same as before, we could just say return brackets 5, 5. But we want to do something more interesting than that. So we're going to say return brackets. But in those brackets, we're going to pick some random numbers. We're going to use a function from smallpixel to do that. We're going to say smallpixel.randomInt, capital I. And then it's going to be a random int between uh, starting at 1. So the first thing it could be is 1. We don't want 0 because that would be right off the edge of the screen. We're not allowed to go there. And then we're going to say, or up to 18 more than that. So, small pixel. So that was the x coordinate. And we've got to choose a random y coordinate as well. And it's exactly the same. So, basically, saying your x coordinate is a random number starting at 1 and uh, 8 to 18 more. Um, and your y coordinate the same. So, that's how we make a random apple. Um, and we, instead of starting off with an apple always at 5, 5. We're actually going to call this function random apple. So let's see where we start off with the apple at always at 5, 5. We're going to change that. So delete that 5, 5 and type random apple. Bracket, bracket. Don't forget the bracket, bracket. That means call the function. If you just want to mention the name of the function, you can just say random apple on its own. If you want to call the function so you actually run the code inside and get the stuff out, you have to do your bracket, bracket. Or well, sometimes, like with this, the set function, it's bracket and then a load of arguments and then a close bracket. But anyway, the way of calling a function is bracket bracket. So we made a function called random apple. So now when we start the game, instead of the apple being at 5, 5, it could be anywhere. So that was kind of, that's useful, but it doesn't actually do the thing we want, which is to be able to eat an apple. So to be able to eat an apple, we're going to go to the update function. And let's do it af just after the bit we wrote about crashing into the wall. And let's say, make a comment, if we hit the apple, we get longer, right? Because that's what happens in Snake. So we do, it's going to be an if. We're going to say if we hit the apple. So how do we say if we hit the apple? Well, it's going to be something to do with new head, because that's where we are, and model.apple, right? We kind of want to say, if new head and model dot apple are the same coordinates, then we do some stuff. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to say e small pixel dot equal arrays brackets. So this is a function called equal arrays inside small pixel. We're going to say if new head and model dot apple are equal arrays. Now they're arrays because an array is the technical word for what I've been calling a list. So an example of an array is this this little pair, 10, 11. So anything that starts with a square bracket and ends with a square bracket is an array. And if we want to ask whether two of these little arrays are equal, we have to use the small pixel dot equal arrays. Um, and that checks, is new head the same array as model.apple? So if this was 10, 10, this would be checking whether model.apple is also 10, 10. So if we hit the apple, that's what that if or does, then do the stuff inside curly brackets. And what we're going to do is make our snake longer. So we're going to make it five longer. So the way we do that is we make another loop. And this time we're going to do, this is the normal way of saying just do something five times. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. I should just copy this down exactly as it is. And just trust me that that means do this thing five times. Start off with i being zero. Go up until i is 5, and make i bigger every time. I said I wasn't going to explain it, and I did. But not very well, so you know, cool. cool. So, what we're going to do is add one thing onto our tail every time. So, we do, so it basically says, five times, do this thing. 
And what we're going to do is add something onto our tail. So push add something on to tail, because tail is a list. Uh, it has this function on it called push. And the thing we're going to add on is a coordinate again. So square brackets. And we're going to just put on minus 1, comma minus 1. So basically saying add on an extra element, an extra, an extra coordinate onto our tail. Um, but we're saying just put on minus 1, minus 1, as in stuff that's off the screen. Well, it doesn't matter yet. So what will happen is as we... As we move forward, these minus ones will get eaten up and thrown away, and our, our, our snake will actually get longer. So all we're doing is saying make new tail longer. The way we're doing that is adding on some kind of invalid coordinates onto the end, and then as we get uh, as we move forward, those are going to be replaced by valid coordinates. Our snake's actually going to get longer. Trust me. So the other thing we need to do, as well as making the tail longer, is move the apple. Right? We can't have the apple be in the same place after we just eaten it. So the way we do that is we say model.apple equals, and we've written a function for this, right? That's why we write functions so we can reuse them. And we say, okay, make the apple be another new random position by calling the randapple function. So bracket bracket means call the function. Give me back the answer. Put the answer into apple. Okay, so that was if you eat an apple, you get longer. While we're here, let's also say if we hit my our own body we die, because we're going to start getting quite a long snake at this point, so. Hit. I keep typing git instead of hit. Use git a lot. Uh, if we hit our own body, we die. So, how are we going to do that? Well, it's definitely going to be an if. And inside the if, it's definitely going to say we die. The way we say we die is model.alive equals false, right? So the only question is what goes inside these brackets to say what are we asking about? So this time is again because coordinates are actually little arrays of two things, we're going to use a little array function to help us. We're going to say if small pixel dot array includes array new tail comma new head. So we're basically saying if the tail overlaps with the head. So if the tail has a coordinate inside it which is the same as what our head is supposed to be, then we're hitting our own tail and we die. So file save, switch back to Chromium, don't forget to reload, and let's try playing our game again. Now let's try eating an apple. Oh look it works, our tail's getting longer, it gets longer by five every time. And now we've got long enough tail, I reckon we can hit ourselves. When we hit ourselves, we die. So we've pretty much got a game here. We've got a little bit of tidying up to make the game look a bit more interesting. But we really have pretty much got a game. So if you've got this far uh, with me, you've already written a game, okay? So let's not give up. Let's get it. Let's make it even better. So we've got some finishing off to do. This is going to be basically the last chunk of code that we're going to write, and we're going to be done. So first thing I want to do is I want to show the score at the top of the screen. So the way that we can do that in small pixel is we can do some a, quite a simple command to just draw something at the top of the screen. So we can say screen. So we're in the view function, and there's a there's a there's a method on screen, a function called uh, message dot uh, screen dot message top left. So that's our function. It's a call function. We do bracket bracket, and then we have to say inside the brackets what message we want to draw, and we're going to write a string. But we're going instead of using double quotes like we had before, like we had somewhere else. We're going to use backticks to write our, our string. We're going to say score colon, and then we're going to substitute in like something that we want to write. So the way we do that is dollar curly bracket close curly bracket, and then inside the curly bracket we say what to substitute in. And I'm going to type that in and then explain it. So the backticks, by the way, are normally in the top left of your keyboard. Um, at least on my keyboard they are. So make sure it's definitely a back tick, not a single quote, which is normally on the right hand side. It's got to be this one that's like a little bit diagonal. And this stuff, score and the, and the colon and the space, that just that's just um, just say the word score on the screen. But then anything that's inside dollar curly brackets, it means substitute in um, a, the value of a variable that we've got instead of actually write. So it won't write on the screen dollar curly bracket model blah blah blah. Instead it'll take this value 
and substitute it into that string. So this value, model.body, that's referring to this thing here. And then there's there's a property on body which is the length of it. So basically we're saying how many entries are there inside this body. So at the beginning there are five. Uh, but then every time we add more stuff on with this push up here, we make it longer. And we do that five times every time you eat an apple. So if we've done this right, your score will go up by five every time you eat an apple. And actually, let's just try it, see whether this message starts appearing at the top of the screen. Don't forget to reload, I nearly forgot then. So look, it says score colon five at the top, so it looks like it's working. Let's try it out. Oops, I died. <laughs> let's reload again. So let's eat an apple. Oh look, score 10, score 15, looks like I ate another apple. Oh, and then I died. Um, so it's working. We're drawing our score on the screen with just this one line. So that was quite good, wasn't it? So our score is just going to be the length of our body. Um, we're not going to do anything clever, like work out some kind of other score. Um, so that was one thing we needed to fix to show, display our score. The next thing is we really need to draw some walls around the outside of the screen, right? Because when you hit the edge, you, you die. Um, but you can't really see why. So let's make that better. The way we're going to draw the walls is we're going to do a, a loop. So what, what a for loop does is it says, go do something multiple times, once for everything in this list. So we ask screen, give me all your x's, all your x coordinates, uh, put the answer into x, and then run this code as many times as there are x's. So there's 20 points on the screen, or 20 x coordinates on the screen, so we should get called 20 times, with x being a different number every time. And when we get called that, we're going to just do screen.set. So this is exactly the same way we've drawn boxes on the screen before. Um, we're going to say the x coordinate is this x that we've just been given. So that'll be different every time around the loop. The y coordinate is going to be just the minimum allowed y. And the color we want to draw is just going to be 150, 150, 150, which is just a kind of a gray color. It's like, well, the red, green, and the blue are all about the same. So that's, oops, that's how we're doing um, the left hand, let me get this right, the top, the wall across the top of the screen. So they're always at the minimum y, and then x changes every time. So while we're here, let's also do the wall across the bottom of the screen by saying same x, but we're going to say max y. So now this draws different x's every time and the maximum y coordinate. And then we're just going to copy all this because we're going to do something, whoops, we're going to do something quite similar to draw the walls at the side of the screen. So I just did a control V for paste there. So we're going to say give me all the y coordinates using this list screen.ys and then we're going to say set screen.minx max x comma y. So I've done that I've done that in a slightly confusing way. You might just want to look at the code I've written and, and make sure your code looks the same. So if we're saying go through all the x's and at x comma the maximum the minimum and maximum draw something. And then we're saying go through all the y's and at the minimum x comma that y that we've been given and the maximum x comma that y that we've been given draw this. So this should do the right hand wall this should do the left hand wall, this should do the bottom wall, and this should do the top wall. So let's check whether that, all that stuff we've done works. Right, we do file save, go back to Chromium, click reload or refresh. And look, you can see walls around the edge already, can't you? And if we move around, everything's still working, we still grow, we can still die when we crash. And now we can see, oh, I, the reason why I died is because I hit the wall. So it kind of makes a bit more sense. So we are nearly there now with a game that almost looks finished, doesn't it? There's one more thing that I think we should do, which is when you die, we should display that a little bit better. I think we should show that you crashed by showing exactly what, um, which square of the snake hit something by changing its color. And I think we should draw a message on the screen. Um, once we've done that, we're nearly there. It's going to be one last little bit we do. So, um, let's go to the code where we say we draw the snake's body. Now, let me think about where I'm going. Yeah, 
Uh, the code where we draw the snake's body. So after that, let's just check, are we dead? So if we're dead, we're going to do a little bit of extra drawing. So how do we ask, are we dead? Can you think of that? We actually did it in the update function before. The way we say that is we say, if not, because that's what exclamation mark means, model dot alive. So if we're not alive, we must be dead, right? And in between the curly brackets, we say what to do if we're dead. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say do, to do what I said, which is make change the color of the front of the snake if um, it, to show where we hit something. I just think it looks better. So we do screen dot set model dot body. So that gives us the body. Then we want the first thing in the body because that's the head. And then we want the x coordinate. So we say bracket zero again to say give me the x coordinate. And then we say model dot body first thing in the body, and then the y coordinate. So we say brackets one. And then we have a color. Let's make it blue. Zero zero two five five. Red green blue. Zero zero two five five. So not much red, not much green. Lots of blue. So it's going to be blue. Uh, also, we're going to draw a message on the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say make everything uh, sort of a dimmer colors so that we can read our message nicely. Then I'm going to say tell me what the score is. So remember the score was just model dot body. Whoops. Score equals model dot body dot length. So give me the score and put it into this thing called score. Here. Whoops. Not here. Here. Uh, just remember the score. And the reason we're remembering it is because we're going to write it on the screen. We're going to, the way we're going to write a screen across the a, me a message across the whole screen is we're going to say score dot message. And then we're going to give a whole list of things to write at different points on the screen. So we're going to say, well done. Because we're sure that the player played well. We're putting those in normal quotes. And we're going to do back ticks for the next bit because we're going to write the score. So just like we did before where we substitute stuff in. But this time the thing we're substituting in is just score. And then we're going to say press. And then we're going to say diagonal brackets select so let's move me out of the way so we're going to say press select but we're going to put select and diagonal brackets because small pixel will turn that into actually saying press enter so we're drawing a, a message on the screen saying uh, well done your score was so and so and press enter to continue we've dimmed the screen and we've drawn a blue dot where you crashed so that's all very well but we're saying press enter and actually, we haven't written any code to, to handle what happens when you do press enter. So let's do that. So let's go back into our, our update function. And remember, we had this code for when you're dead, don't do anything. We want to slightly change that. Now we want to say, when you're dead, don't do anything. Oh, except if the person, if the player presses enter, then we do want to do something. So let's just ask about that. Let's get rid of this return for now. We're just going to say if. Now you know you already know how to ask whether the user pressed something, don't you? You say running game dot received input. Don't forget capital I there. Select, which in this case means enter. So small pixel asks you to use the word select and things like that. Um, in case you're using a controller or something like that, you might there might be a select button on the controller. So it tries to use words that kind of. Um, that could apply in both cases. It's confusing here, but just just go with it. So if if the person pressed enter, basically, then what we can do is we can say to small pixel, okay, stop, stop this game, go back to the title screen. So you say running game dot end game to do that. Oh, and also we need to update our model because. Um, when, when they start the next game, they want they need to start from a fresh model, not from carrying on with our model as it is here. So when they press enter, we end the game, but we also say change the model to be just a completely fresh new model. And we do that by calling new model, which gives us a completely fresh new model, right? With a snake that's only five long. So that's what that's all about. And the only other thing to say is, um, if they didn't press enter, we want to carry on doing what we were doing before. So we're just going to say else. And we're going to just return exactly the way we did before. 
So either they pressed enter, in which case we reset everything and go back to the title screen, or they didn't press enter, in which case we just sit here, just like we did before. So now we're going to do file save. And we're going to click reload in Chromium, and I think we have a complete game now. So we can control it with our arrow keys. We can eat apples. And when we crash, we draw a blue dot to show where we crashed, and we display this message saying, well done. Score 10, press enter. And now if we press enter, we do indeed go back to the title page. Uh, we can carry on playing, play again. So if you've got this far and you've written this game, well done. That was hard work. I imagine you spent a lot of time looking at weird red error messages in the console, going back and checking your code against mine. Uh, but I hope that the blog post that's linked from the show notes um, helped you with that. If you have problems, you get stuck, you get weird errors you can't understand, add comments uh, on, on the video or on the blog post. I will try and help you out. Um, have fun. It is frustrating, but it is also so exciting and fun. Write your own games. If you write a game that you like, send it to me and I'll put it onto the Small Pixel website with all the others, if I like it. Um, and if I, even if I don't put it on the website, I'll be so overjoyed to see your game. So please do send me your game. Also, have a look at the bottom of um, the blog post. There's some challenges for you to do to improve this snake game. And there's also some links to how you can learn more about how to make web pages, how to make games, um, more videos you can watch, uh, and how you can get involved um, with the Small Pixel website. So um, I really look forward to seeing your games. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, hit like, hit subscribe, all that stuff, and see you next time.